Oh, hi. Uh, my name's Sean McCormick. I'm a location sound mixer based in the Austin, Texas area. And I'm going to take a moment to go over a few different microphone types and discuss some of their possible applications. Let's look at a few examples of dynamic microphones. By now, most of you have probably seen this one in use. This is the trusty SM58 by Shure. It's a handheld dynamic microphone. It has a cardioid pickup pattern, and it is designed to handle a lot of abuse. Many nightclubs that own their own PA systems own a lot of these, and they all smell like beer. Another very popular handheld dynamic microphone is the Electrovoice RE50B. It's primarily used in news gathering, electronic news gathering, otherwise known as ENG, and you've seen many reporters shoving these into people's faces. Uh, it's very rugged, it, and unlike the SM58, it has an omnidirectional pickup pattern versus the cardioid. It rejects outside noise very well. This bad boy right here is the Electrovoice RE20. This microphone is seen in just about every radio station out there, and it's also found in a lot of recording studios because it can also be used for instrument recording. It handles high signal pressure levels very well, and I've seen them used on everything from a piano to kick drum. Unlike the other microphones, it has a bass roll-off right here. Let's take a look at a few condenser microphones. We'll start with an industry workhorse, the Sennheiser MKH416. This is used on many a film set and TV and in news gathering. It is a short shotgun microphone. It has a super cardioid pickup pattern and it also uses 48 volt phantom power. Uh, it's also seen in a lot of voiceover studios as well. It has great uh, off axis rejection. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Next up, we have a Russian-made condenser microphone, the Octava MK012. It is a fairly low-cost instrument mic, and it also has found to be useful for booming dialogue indoors. It has removable caps. Right now, the hypercardioid pattern is on. Now we'll screw on the Omni cap. screen on here. Okay, and now the pickup pattern should be pretty much all around it rather than just directly to it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Next up on the block is the Audio-Technica 4050. It is a large diaphragm condenser microphone, has a lot of options on board, and I particularly like to use this on female vocals or on instruments, but it's really a Swiss Army knife. The pattern it's currently set on is cardioid, but we can switch that to Omni. And now we can have pickup pretty much anywhere around the microphone. Check, check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's switch it. Now we also have figure eight. Okay, and that lets us use both sides of the microphone. This would be the front. And then we can also talk into the front and in the rear. And this would be used often in a mid-side miking setup for stereo. It has a 10 dB pad, minus 10. And it also has a low cut filter. And that should skinny up my voice a little bit. Check one, two, one, two, one, two. The microphones we just looked at and listened to are just a fraction of what's out there and we could spend weeks discussing the bells and whistles of each. When deciding on a microphone purchase, you have to decide what kind of work are you gonna be doing the most and what kind of budget are you saddled with. There's a couple of sayings I like. One is buy once, cry once, and the other is you can't afford the cheap stuff. Both of which mean basically if you try to save a few bucks on the front end, buying some uh, inexpensive gear, and then you find out it doesn't work in the real world, then you end up having to purchase over again. I highly recommend renting equipment first. Also, music stores have a lot of inventory you can go check out before you buy anything. Try to let need drive your business purchase decisions rather than want. Thanks for watching.